I'll be reading a suite of poems tonight called The Act of Finding Myself in Three Parts. So, yeah, prepare yourself, I guess. <laughs> um, finding a Quiet Reality. As a child, when I reached towards the strawberries and cream in the confectionery aisle and my mother pulled me away, I vowed to my sister to never be so cruel a woman. I would give my children all the lollies they could dream of. Instead, I give them a swift scalpel to the brain before they reach seven weeks gestation. As a child, I watch my father, his father, my mother, her mother, every role model in my life, destroy their bodies with drags and shots, and I vow to myself to never be so cruel to the body that I live in. Instead, most nights, I dream about smoking cigarettes. I itch still for the cool burn in my veins, that means that my brain will be quiet for once. Most nights, my hand shakes if it isn't wrapped around the neck of a bottle. As a child, I grew to know love without fear or consequence, and I wanted to keep it a beautiful and holy thing. Instead, I dread it with every fiber of my being. As a child, I vowed to keep close and protect everyone that I love. Instead, I bury them. As a child, I sang the lyrics to Tomorrow from Annie, when I ever I felt grey and lonely until my throat was raw. And I felt like maybe it wasn't a lie and maybe I would sing it until the day that I died. Instead, I'm never sure if there'll be some. I only know that today there is none. The second one is called Finding a Voice. I listen to the ribbit sounds as my bones settle on the ground and my mind fades away. I cannot feel the cool, damp blades, the grass whereon my body lays. It's softer than the cement bench, but further away from light. Let's go back to the gallery. I laugh instead of fight. I cannot feel the callous hands tug at my zipper clumsily. I threw out everything I wore that night. I cannot hear the coarse voice that tells me I am heavenly. Breath on my neck, thumb on my cheek, avoiding the eyes from where I weep quietly. Because if you meet my gaze, it's real. You cannot tell yourself that I feel enjoyment. I feel, I feel, I fell. I feel you creep into my mind sometimes. Years later, cotton sheets you've never touched. Old house, shit mattress, but new love. Your hand is his, your skin his touch. I die inside sometimes. You touch me from inside my mind, so I kill it off to black you out. More touch until it isn't real, rough touch until I cannot feel, I cannot have slow love, soft touch, I cannot look into their soul. If I see their eyes, it's real, if I meet their gaze, I feel, and I do not want to think tonight. I wish I could talk to younger me and steer her clear of you, or just be there to help her through. Give her a voice at 15, let her know that things get better, you're not meek anymore and you deserve to be seen. But most of all, I wish I could tell her that it is not your fault, it is not your fault, it is not your fault, tell someone. Finding solace. I have makeshift walls built of bricks and bitterness. I used to feel sorry for myself, thinking that growing up I knew more loss than I knew love. I told myself that grief was all I was, and I filled my veins with asphalt and wondered why I went nowhere while the whole world passed me by. A turning point in my late adolescence was recognizing my wall for what it was. Poor craftsmanship by the shaking hands of a terrified and wounded child. A fleeted attempt at self-preservation, like encasing a fire because you're scared of rain and you don't understand how you have smothered it down to desperate and gasping embers. I have made mistakes and I feel old in a young body. I have done horrible things. I have seen the apple, bit it and burnt down the whole fucking orchard. And I let ugly souls trample mine and I have scarred beautiful people. But the most horrible mistake that I have ever, ever done was mistake grief and love as being utterly unsynonymous. You would not know one without the other. So I have come to the conclusion that if I have lived a life with such tremendous grief, then I am so fucking lucky to have loved enough to hurt this much. Thank you.